uh, are kind of like the um, what we'll be talking about today are sort of a lesser utilized components of Google. Uh, there's still a lot more uh, that we have yet to cover, but these are a few. Uh, and these are some of the ones that I found to be uh, a lot more useful than some others. And one that I'm starting to use a lot right now is Google Keep. It's it's becoming my go-to application for a number of things. So I'm going to start with Google Keep, and then we're going to move on to some other things. Um, we'll talk here. Actually, let me give you a little bit of the agenda here. We're going to talk about Google Keep. I'm going to talk a little bit about getting extensions, uh, Chrome extensions. And uh, one of my favorite ones that I'm going to uh, show you as an example of a very useful extension. Um, a little bit about getting add-ons. Um, and we'll also do Google Hangouts and Google Groups. Um, so I want to start by talking about Google Keep. Google Keep is, is an accessible note-taking tool, very similar to the type of note-taking tool that you get when you buy like an iPhone or something like that, where you have an application that's called Notes and you can put little notes in it and you can keep it on your phone. But this does much more than what those applications can do because it integrates with all of the other Google applications. And that's what makes it so um, remarkable. Uh, it's something that you can have on a phone, you can have it on a tablet, you can use it on a Chromebook, you can use it on a computer, and it can be utilized as a Chrome extension. So it, when you log in and take a note in any one of these places, it's also accessible from any other of these places. So it's a very useful in that way. Well, what can it do? Well, it can be used for taking notes, uh, keeping links, various web links, etc. It can take voice notes, voice dictation, uh, and you can also hand write notes by using like a pen tool that allows you to scribble. It also allows you to to notate on a note, to, to create annotations on a note and uh, some other things like that. But right now, th this, we're only scratching the surface. We're going to see a lot more when I dig into it. Um, other things it can do is you can archive, you can archive and save web links. So if you're on your phone and you and you hit a website that you really like and you need to keep it, uh, you you can do so in and you can put it into Google Keep. You can share your notes. Anything you create in your Google Keep can be shared in the same way that you can share all of the other types of things that we share in Google. It allows you to make checklists. It allows you to collect images. It does optical character recognition. And we'll take a look at how that works, which means I can take a picture of a page of a book and then it can turn it into text. Now, since uh, since La Casa Dominicana deals with languages and sometimes needs translation, this can be a great way to translate printed material from a book into um, something that can, can be digitized and then you could use things like Google Translate to turn to translate that into another language. You can you can record voice rec uh, recordings. It does voice recognition at the same time, and of course it integrates with G Suite as I said before. And it has a great little feature called location reminders, which I'll talk about as we move forward. Uh, how can it be used? Well, teachers can use it for organization to set reminders for things to collect data or research, to share data or research or any types of notes they might want to share with students, and to share with other teachers who you may be collaborating with. Um, and uh, you can also use it to organize your thoughts. And it could also be used as a basic for as a basis for creating compositions. Students can use it pretty much in uh, almost the same ways. They can use, um, use it for organization. They can also set reminders for themselves. Um, it's great for uh, collecting data uh, for research. They can share their um, notes with teachers, share with collaborators. Uh, again, thought organization, uh, even creating storyboards for, um, for uh, making videos and things like that, and composition. So what I want to do here is, um, I recorded since I can't really um, 
show you my phone on this webinar, what I did is I recorded a short four minute demonstration of how to use uh, Google Keep on, the, uh, on a phone. So I'm gonna play that four minute video and then afterwards I'm gonna go come back live and then I'm going to, um, then I'm going to um, show you the web-based version of it, which is very, very similar. So uh, uh, Faisal, if, if for some reason the audio doesn't come through from this, I don't know if this is picking up my computer audio let me know. I don't know if this will work or not, but I'm going to try to play this video. Let's see if this works. Okay. Are you... Can you hear the audio? No. Okay. Then we're not going to use this video, but you can revisit it later. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do here, I'm going to leave the presentation. And I'm going to show Google Keep from the web browser perspective, which works very much like Google Keep from the um, fr from the phone perspective. So to get there, I'm just going to go to keep.google.com. Okay. And uh, what you're looking at are tiles of notes that I've taken over time. Some I've taken, some are useful. Some are just some things that I've taken for uh, demonstrations for workshops like this and uh, whatnot. So what I want to do is show you the, the various types of notes you can create and how you can create them. So before I do that, I need to shut off this one extension, which actually I'm going to be turning on a little bit later. But for right now, I want to shut it off because I don't want it to get in the way. Now, um, up here, it says take a note. And when you're on your phone and you have the Google Keep by the way, after this session, I highly recommend you to download the Google Keep. Um, if you don't already have it on your phone, please download the Google Keep on your phone. You're going to love it. So um, the, the same little tab uh, appears on the phone version of this. It says take a note. And when you click in it, it allows you to put a title of your note. And it allows you to put whatever notes you want to put into your note. Okay, I can fix my spelling here. And that's, so what we have just done is just a basic note. There's nothing very special here. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. And when you close it, it actually creates the note. Now there's a number of, there are a number of organizational things we can do with this note once we, um, you know, later on. But what I wanna do is show you the other types of notes we can make before we get there. The next type of note I want to make here is if I click on uh, these ellipses down here, which opens up a menu, okay, I can do one that says show checkboxes. And this still lets me make a note, okay, but it allows me to do it in a list form with checkboxes, which I really like. So let's say that this was a shopping list or something, and I wanted to do milk, okay, bread. and eggs. Oh, I guess this is what people make when, they, when it snows. And uh, meat. I want some meat. Okay. So, so these, this is what a checklist would look like. Now, the way this thing works is that as I take items off my list, by the way, this could be a to-do list too. It doesn't have to be a shopping list. But um, as I take things off my list, they get crossed out and sent to the bottom which is really nice. Now, if you want to send one back up to the top, you just click it again and it will put it back up to the top. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Uh, you can also, if you have all your items down there, you can also click on this uh, drop down menu and you can, uh, you can click uncheck all items and it brings everything back up just the way you started the list at the very beginning. So, um, so this is perfect. Now, let me show you something that's very cool about Google Keep that this does. And this, this particular list is a great one for me to utilize this option in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the little bell 
which is for my reminder or for my notifications. And uh, look at my uh, choices for reminders. I can, I can remind myself later today. I could send me a reminder tomorrow. I could send me a reminder next week. I could pick a date and time, okay, right from a calendar. Or uh, I can do this thing that says pick a place, okay? So let me explain how this works. Uh, by the way, when you choose any of these, when you have the app on your phone, you'll get a notification on your phone as long as you have your notifications for Google Keep enabled on your phone. Now, I'm going to do pick a place. And um, what this is going to do is, um, let me see if I can find, I'm going to do Costco, Manahawken, which is... Uh, not far from here. Okay, and I'm going to hit save. So that's a store where I could easily get milk, bread, eggs, and meat. And uh, what this will do now is when I have this on my phone, it uses GPS. And when I get to the location that I've that I've enabled in here, the list will pop up on my phone when I get there. So it's like it, it's really cool. The way this works so it's something I, I encourage you to try i use this feature a lot i use this if i have like um a link to a registration when i go to a conference i put in the i, I put in the the location of the conference and uh when i get to the conference it pops up on my phone when i go to the registration desk registration desk there it is on my phone i'm ready to go so that's another type of list we can make you can also do lists where you uh, import or add images. And if you do this on your phone, the image you'll be adding will come from your photos on your telephone or whatever your, your photo is. So if I put in an image, I can just select an image and now that becomes an image in my note. It, becomes, it goes to the top of the note and then you can add text or any kind of notes after that. And... Um, you know, that, that's really nice. Now I'm gonna add some more stuff here. Let's see here, I'm gonna make, um, Hold on, sorry. I was just I, I got confused or something. There's something that was that was missing for me. I was trying to look for the option to create a voice recording, but that seems to be a phone option only, or there could be something going on where my mic isn't reaching Google Keep because I'm using it for this webinar. I'm not quite sure. Uh, however, um, what I want to do is talk about how I can organize my notes once they are created. One thing I can do is I can select any note and I can color code it. So if I wanted to make all of these notes that I made today purple, I could do so, and then they'll stand out. As something that I have created now. Um, today, so here they are. See, I'm making all these purple. And you can just see now that that's one way to um, to organize your notes. Another thing you can do is you can add labels to notes. So if I have any notes, you'll see here, look at this, I have a label. This would be like my social studies paper. Let's say that I was compiling information about something that I wanted to use for uh, a, a paper I have to write for a class or something like that. So um, this is, um, so what we can do with, with something like this is if I have a note open, I can, um, uh, change, well, this says change label. So wait, hold on. Let me go to one that doesn't have a label already. So let me just go to my notes and let's take like one of these ones I made today. So I'm going to go up here. Now, if I click, I can do um, add a label and I can either add one of the labels that I've already created by checking them or I can create a new label here. So my new label will be a uh, webinar and uh, I'll create it. Now that is labeled as webinar. So I'll do the same for this one. But now that I've already made the label, 
I can just choose it. Okay, so now let's take a look at how these can be used. Now, when I have labels made, they appear over here on the left. And then when I click on a label, it filters to only that label. So if I have things like this, oh, this, is this by the way, is a drawing uh, little thing. I'm going to show you how that works in a minute. Um, so what I have over here is, you know, my, my um, filter for the for all of these labels now i'm going to go back to, to to look at all of my labels and i'm going to open up uh, a label here let's see here um, this was a good one right here and don't pay attention to this i'm going to get rid of all of this right now just delete it and uh what this is is text taken from a book okay just taken from a page of a book and when you do this, once it's been uh, taken, once the page has been taken, I can click on this and uh, there's an option. I'm clicking on these ellipses down here at the bottom. There's an option called grab image text. And what it does is it converts the text from this image into typewritten text. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some ways that some things we can do with that once we, once we um, get to other applications. But that's something that turns uh, Google Keep right into an optical character recognition application. Additionally, I can create a note and I can do a note by drawing the note, okay, if I wanted to. So this is great for if you need to do mathematical equations or something like that. You can, you can create some things, maybe something that you might want to put into another type of document later or something, and this is the, one of the few things that actually works a lot better on the phone than it does, than it would here, because uh, it's much easier to draw with your finger on the phone than it is to draw uh, from there. So those are the various different types of, of notes that we can create, and those are the various different um, ways to organize the notes. Okay, now once they're organized, well, how do we want to use them? Well, let me show you by going to, um, I'm going to start a new doc. And by the way, I want to show you a little trick right here before we move on. Is I'm, I want to, I'm going to, I want to start a new document. And let's say I'm just somewhere out on the web. Doesn't matter where. Uh, let me go to um, just, let me just do a web search. And um, let's say uh, here I am on Wikipedia, okay? And by the way, this is just an incidental little technique I want to teach you. But um, when you want to start anything new in an application in Google, you can put in the name of the application, .new, up here as a URL, and it'll start a new document for you. So if I want to start a new document, I could go to docs.new. And if I type that in, Look what it does. It gives me a brand new empty sheet that will go to my Google Drive based on whatever account I have logged in. OK, uh, for just just quickly before we move on, I'm going to come back to that document. But before I do that, I want to show you if I did something like sheets.new. It'll make me a new Google Sheet. OK, and uh, that works with slides or, or whatever. So that's just a shortcut little trick. Uh, that that um, I could thought I could show you. So what I want to do now is um, I want to point out this little panel on the right hand corner, or the or the right side of my browser. You'll see that I have the ability to integrate calendar. I have the and I have my little Google Keep icon, and this is where it starts to get good, because all that stuff that I've compiled in Google Keep is now available to me right from this panel. Okay, so if I'm working on a document, let's, let's give it a second for these things to go in. And um, let's, let's get to the, um, look at this. Here's one of these images where I use the, the um, optical character recognition concept. So if I, if, if I go in here and um, I can take this text And I'm going to do add to document. See that it just puts whatever my note is 
into my document. So if I have this thing where I did the uh, the optical character recognition, okay. Now some of this I could actually delete the image if I like. Now I just have the text, okay. And that was purely scanned right from um, right from Google. So so this is great. So if we you know look through things like this, you know any of these images that I put in. I can I can use so any type of text or research or anything that I've compiled, I can put into a document. It's a great way to to collect notes on various different devices and then be able to compile them together into one document uh, to make them you know to compile it into one meaningful document. So any of these I want I can I can place right in there. Okay, so. Um, it's a great use for, for this application. So I'm going to move forward. And uh, I do want to show you another thing that I can do with Google Keep. And I'm going to go back to the um, to a Wikipedia page of some kind, as if I'm, I always do Martin Luther King, because I can find him by just typing three letters. I've, and this will be a great segue to my next topic, which I've also added in here a Google extension called Save to Google Keep. And if I click that, that now has saved the, the link to this page into my Google Keep. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, see there, there it is. And if I ever wanna go back to that page, it just puts that into my Google Keep. By the way, I'll be able to get to that same page right from my phone when I open up Google Keep or from any other place where I'm logged in with my Google Keep account. So uh, that's how I use Google Keep um, for the most part, and I use it. I, I just I use it for everything. It's just become this huge hodgepodge of anything that I want to keep. So that's how that works. Now the next thing I want to talk about here are Google extensions or Chrome extensions, and uh, let me zoom into our presentation. And basically what extensions are, if you look up at the top of my browser, you'll see these little icons. And what they are, they are they, they augment the, the capabilities of the Chrome browser. They, they create extra tools that Chrome does, doesn't have. Okay, so um, th that, that's what we use them for. But what I want to talk about is how to get them. And uh, I also want to focus, uh, spend a little time on some of the ones that, that I've liked over the years that I really like to, to work with uh, over time. I'm gonna focus on one very powerful one called read and write, okay? So what we wanna do to get an extension and to install it in our browser so that it shows up here is we're gonna go to the Chrome Web Store and uh, you'll see all kind of uh, extensions for lots of different things in here. Okay, so if if I want to do, let, let's see if I have read and write. Let's see if that shows up. Okay, there it is. So this is the one we're going to look at today. And you can see that it, because it says rate it, it doesn't say add to Chrome. It says rate it. That means I've already added it to my browser. Um, so you can see some of these other ones I did not. So if, if I wanted to do this text help PDF reader, if I wanted to add that to my browser, I could just click add to Chrome. Now, I might not even want this extension, but I can put it in there. And if I don't like it, I'll show you how to manage your extensions later. Okay, so you can look at look for extensions any way you, um, by any kind of keywords you want. So let's see, if I do organization, Let's see what appears. That's just a keyword I'm looking at. So these are all things that, that have some organization type things or um, whatever. So you can find extensions here at the Chrome Web Store that way. Now, when you do enable an extension, you get these little toolbars. You get these little icons across the top. By the way, there's another one I really like that I want to show you as we go on. It's called Grammarly. Uh, which is pretty powerful, uh, even as a free application, it's a pretty good one too. I'll show you how that one works as we go on. So now, what does an extension do for me? Well, I think when we were doing Google Classroom, we actually looked at the Add to Classroom extension, which um, is really nice. So we kind of got to see what that did. 
Um, there's a there's a one I use in here called DF YouTube, which is uh, DF YouTube, which stands for Distraction Free YouTube. And let me show you what that does. If I go to YouTube and I load in a video, um, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, okay. I'm not even going to worry about what the video is. You'll see that we have all this other stuff here. We have these comments. We have all these other videos. Now, watch. If I enable my distraction-free YouTube, I'm going to activate it. Okay. Now, look. It removed all of those things. It, it removed all the comments. It removed everything except the description of the video and the video itself. Okay, so I can enable or deactivate it, and I'll watch, I'll deactivate it. And I love to use this as an example of an extension because I think it really shows how it augments your capabilities, how it augments your, um, your Google the Chrome capabilities. Okay, so with that in mind, so that's a good one to get, especially if you need to use um, YouTube in front of groups of people and you don't want to have all this extra noise on your pages, it's a good way to go. So what I want to do is I want to show you the extension that I downloaded that I was talking about. And the one I want to show you is, is called uh, Read and Write. And it looks like this little, the, the, the uh, icon for it up in my toolbar looks like a little puzzle piece. And I'm going to start with a new document. So I'm going to just so and I want to just kind of go through all the various things that this that this one extension does. So when I click on it, I can enable it. Okay. And it, what it does is it gives me a, a new toolbar that I didn't have before. Okay. And we're going to take a look at every one of these tools and what it does. Okay. The first one is just a spell checker. So if I type in some text here. And I'll spell something wrong on purpose. Okay. Actually, let me uh, shut this off. Okay. I can select, whoops, I lost my tool. Excuse me. I have too many extensions doing too many different things for me. So let me get my thing here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the checker on here. And I can right click and uh, let's see. Boy, it doesn't even know what I was trying. Oh, it did. It, it fixed it. How are you doing? Let's see if it gets this one. I'm just right clicking. There it is. I'm getting the right word today. Okay. So that's just, it adds a, a, um, a spell checker that could be a little more robust than the normal spell checker you have in here. Now, the next icon that, that this extension gives us is prediction. What that does is it kind of starts completing sentences for you as you're typing. So let me click on prediction, okay? And it actually starts to give suggestions of words. The, okay, and I don't know if you can hear this, but it will also read them out with a voice. So I'm hearing the voice Okay, so look at this. I could actually almost start to the next. Now, I don't want any of these words. Look at this. So I'm just going to type in thing. Okay. Uh, we look at this. Want to do is get. A look at this new, it just figures out what word could logically come after the one you're doing. A new now, you sometimes you actually have to type your own word, but um, it's a very helpful tool in um, in creating writing. So you have to enable it by clicking this icon and it will uh, put that in for you. The next thing is a dictionary. Okay, so now if I select a word and I add it into the, and I, I, I click here for the dictionary, 
it will give me a definition of that word. It will all, I can also use the icon next to it where you'll see here, it's like a little picture and that's the picture dictionary. When you click the picture dictionary, it gives you these little pictures, which actually, if you want, you can drag those and put them into your document, okay? So, uh, you know, these are some various different types of things. Now, another thing this does, which is great, particularly if you're dealing with people who are ESL or whatever, is that you can select part, uh, part of your document and click the play button and it will read the text back to you. So again, you're probably not hearing it because it's not picking up the internal sounds off of my computer, but um, that will that was reading the text back to me. And of course, with that button, you can you can play it, you can pause it, and you can stop it. Okay, so that's how that works. Now the, this this next thing. The screenshot reader, what that does, let's go to uh, oh, our web page here. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to open this. Um, I'm going to open up the read and write toolbar. So that you don't have to be on a document you're creating for this to work. You can use this uh, pretty much anywhere you are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the screenshot reader and I'm going to select uh, this paragraph. And what we'll do is... Um, it's going to read if, if you basically everywhere that little purple thing is moving it's there's a voice reading this to me okay and if you want it to stop you just close this so this is a great and easy you know a very simple way to work by using it now the thing that this does next to it is it does the exact same thing except it will actually make an audio file that downloads to your computer with the uh, the sound of voice in it. So uh, that that's pretty impressive as well. You can do a web search from here. The screen mask is kind of cool. It will allow, it'll follow your cursor around by, it, it dims the, um, it dims the uh, unused, Part of the, or on, you know parts of the screen you don't want to see, so that if you want to show during a presentation and focus attention on a specific area, you can do that. You can go to its settings, and uh, you can make it you know a bigger or smaller. You can darken the background or lighten it. Okay, and these are uh, presentation tools that people use on things like smart boards and things like that. But they, you know, now they just come right with the Chrome browser. Look, I can increase or decrease the size of uh, what is actually being shown. And then of course I'll darken my background and uh, I need to click okay. And now, so if I want to focus attention on specific sentences while presenting this page, I can do so. Okay. So, so that's how that works. I'm going to shut it off just by, by clicking it again. And uh, there you have it. Now, what I want to do is go back to the document I was working on. And where's the one? So I'm, I'm going to, computer, I'm going to type in a little more text here. We need a monitor, a CPU and a mouse for our computer. Let's see if this works. So what I did is I just typed in some new stuff here. And what I'm gonna do is this time, I'm gonna use these highlighters. And I wanna, I wanna use the same color every time so that this will work properly. So what I'm gonna do is select the word computer and I'm gonna highlight it. Then I'm gonna select the word monitor and I'm gonna highlight it. Then I'm gonna select the word CPU I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to do a mouse. I'm going to highlight it. And that's that's good enough to illustrate what I'm doing. So what I want to do next is click over here on a, this little thing. It has like a little list uh, icon. And what that does is it creates a vocabulary list based on my selections. So whatever I have that's highlighted in purple here, it, it will make me a vocabulary list. So if I click this, Give, his, give it a second. 
it's made me a list complete with pictures if it has pictures it will okay now uh we some of this they didn't know which mouse we meant so uh we could probably delete this but look at this vocabulary list it may just just but just from selecting a few words on a document this is great okay so uh if you need to create a vocabulary list from a document this is this is a great way to go okay so uh and you can also put in a voice note so a voice note would be something like uh where i can select here and uh, record something hello i'm recording something and put insert Okay, and the voice note will appear. Um, on the based based on the highlighted word, just like a note would in, in your in your Google Doc. So um, this is a, a, a really useful thing. Now, if I, another thing I can use here is if I take a word and hide it, uh, or highlight it. See this thing? This is the translator. And I'm going to show you how you can choose your language for the translator. If I select that word, it will uh, show you the word in um, in the in in your in your chosen language. And when you click on the word, it will speak the word with the proper pronunciation of the word. Again, you're probably not hearing that when I click on it, but uh, it will do that for me. So that's really helpful. Now, the way I got that to come up in Spanish is from the actual settings uh, button right here. So if I if I have my toolbar enabled for read and write and I click on these ellipses, I can click here and I can go for options. And you'll see that the uh, my my voice options, I, my preferred voice is US English. OK, the speed, I just keep it right in between. Uh, but look at this, my translation language, I can choose whatever language when I when I pick that Croatian tool, that Croatian tool, when I pick the translation tool, uh, as soon as this, this, whatever language I designate here, that will be the language that it, that it um, changes to. You also have various different settings for all these different types of things. So that's a, a very handy app. OK, um, in, you know, in general, you could also do this practice reading aloud, which basically allows you to select text. And. Um, you can record yourself reading the text. So this is great if you want to work with people who who want, you know, have them work with reading aloud in English, reading out loud in English, and it would make a voice recording of um, of them reading things. So this one application, this little piece of the puzzle, does all of this. Okay, so this might be one of the most robust um, Chrome extensions that I know of out there. There, so uh, that's the general idea of that. OK, so what I want to do is move on now to um, to Google Groups. OK, and to, to work with groups today, I'm actually going to use a different account just because my my Stockton one is a bit limited. So I want to go to my my consumer account and I'm going to go to groups. Google dot com. OK. And uh, you can also get to your groups from the menu here. There should be a, a groups icon if you're not sure. Now, you have, when you get to groups, you have a couple of choices. You can use groups where, that you're already subscribed to. This could be groups that other people have created that have, they've included you in them. Or you could start your own group where you can, you can include other people in it. Now, what is a group? Well, it's any time you want to keep people together to communicate more easily uh, and all stay on the same page. So if you're working on a project with people, it would be great. Um, some people would use it for maybe a, a class or something like that, but that's really not um, 
you, people don't do that quite as much anymore because Google Classroom does that now. So we don't really see that being used in that way nearly as much, okay? But like to show you what groups look like, if I click on my groups, these are various groups that people have either uh, uh, added me to or groups that I've created doing workshops or whatever. But as a, a, as a Google certified trainer, I belong to the Google Education Certified Trainers Group, which allows me to go here. And there are all these, I have access to all these various different types of things, including an extensive forum where we all share information uh, with each other about various different um, things. So um, that is what it looks like to get to a group. Um, but what I wanna do is I want to uh, create a group from scratch. And I wanna show you the different types of groups that can be created. So I'm gonna go to create a group or create group. And you gotta give your group a name. Okay, and uh, the only reason I'm doing La Casa too is because one time when we were doing this before, I did another one called that. And you'll see that your group actually gets a URL when you create it, okay? It doesn't take spaces, so any spaces you put in there, it puts in dashes. And um, you can put in a description for your group. Uh, okay. You can pick the group's primary language, whatever you want it to be. And now, now here's where it gets interesting is, is when you make this selection right here. See this select group type? Various different group types, and they, they, work, they all work a little bit differently. First one you'll see here is email list, okay? And what that does is, is anybody in the group sends out an email, they send it to the group, and, and everybody in the group gets that email. And if anybody responds to one of those emails, that shows up in the email. So it's basically a, a sort of not much different than if you CC'd a bunch of people in an email group, but this makes it a lot easier because you can maybe have hundreds of people in a list like that. The second one is a web forum, which actually allows you to set up a discussion board for uh, any type of web forum. Okay, uh, so if you wanted to create like a discussion group for your colleagues or for a bunch of people doing things, you can you can do so with a, with the web forum. You can also do Q&A forum, which is uh, very similar. The only difference is Q&A is always based on being initiated by a question of some sort so that it's a place where people can go and ask questions about how to do things. Uh, a, a good example of that would be any place where people are posting simply because maybe something isn't working for them and they can say well how uh you know how do i get my read and write extension to work better or whatever so that would be an example of where somebody would use a a, a q a form and then you have one that's collaborative inbox and the best way i can describe this is that um, it's as if you create an email account, it would be the equivalent of everybody having um, the, a password to one email account, okay? So uh, it's a place where, it, it, you know, the, the distinctions are, you know, between that and email list can be a little confusing, but um, it's uh, a kind of a, a place where everybody included on the list is, um, is included on that account. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick with email list for this example, and because that, that seems to be one of the more useful types of things uh, that people use. And now the, the next thing we wanna look at is basic permissions, okay? You can view topics. Um, now, these are basically the permissions of the people of the group. So you're, what, what this is saying is who can view topics? Well, if you shut all these people off, it wouldn't be a very useful group. So, um, uh, but members of the group is usually the default. You usually want people to, to do that. But if it's, if it's in the case of an informational forum or something like that, why not let anyone on the web view the topics, okay? If, if people can learn maybe from the, uh, the questions posted from the forum. The next thing is who can post to the group. Again, the, well, of course, the owners and managers of the group 
can the members of the group, and if you if you want them, maybe you want the members only to be able to read what the managers and the owners are posting. So you can shut them off or you can turn that back on. So that's how that works. And then who can join the group? And this is where you decide if you want your group to be uh, private or you want it to be um, um, more wide open. Okay, so here's how it works. Anyone on the web can join. That just means anybody who wants to go on the web can go in and, and put themselves in on the group. Um, only invited users is one that's basically saying it's a private group, okay? The managers of the group have to invite the people uh, individually for them to be um, invited or to be part of it. And anyone can ask is kind of like, it's making it public, but they can't really join the group unless they, they have to ask for it. And then the, the group administrators can either permit or not permit the person into the group. Okay, so that's a pretty useful one if you're trying to get things um, out to a lot of people and you don't necessarily know all of their email addresses and, uh, you know, you just, you want people to be able to join. So what I'm going to do is, this is the first step of creating the group. I'm going to hit create. And it just wants to make sure I'm not a robot. I'll click continue because uh, if if they had robots come creating groups, that would be that would be miserable. Now look at this. So La Casa Two group has been created. Your group has been created. Get started with your new group. The first thing they want me to do is invite people. Uh, I can always go back and uh, customize some of the group settings. Maybe if I don't like what I chose uh, on that first page, uh, those options will reappear at that point. And then add a topic and start posting. So let's, uh, I'm going to click OK because it, technically I could just hit the hypertext for any one of these and it would take me to them. But I, I know where to go to do um, all of these types of things here. So um, if you go to manage members, on the left it says invite members. Okay. Uh -huh. And there you put the email addresses of 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 whomever you want to invite and they get a, an email invitation to join the group and they can get it as long as they're invited as long as they're logged into the account that's related to the email that you put in to the list now for hangouts hangouts can be um generated in two ways and what hangouts is is basically a web conferencing program and you, one way to get there is by going to hangouts.google.com um, where you can you can initiate a, um, a hangout or you can go to you can do it right from Gmail, which is sort of the more popular way that, that people do this. OK, so the way this works is when you are in Gmail, OK, you can. Um, have this little section down here is dedicated toward uh, getting things done with Hangouts. Now, we can use Hangouts in two ways. We can use it as a chat, a typewritten chat, or we can use it as a video conferencing type of thing. So I'm going to um, include um, Faisal in this. And um, when I click on his name, I can actually send him. Now, if he has his Gmail open on his computer, I can send him a message. And uh, that is basically texting. Now he's going in here. Let's see if he's going to say something back. I am Treaty. Uh, okay, so do. Oh, ready. He's ready. Okay, so this we could go back and forth like this and be very happy and never really have to worry at all about anything else, um, you know, and this is a great way to correspond. So people use this a lot for office correspondence and whatnot. And as you can see, the interface for it just it, it appears right in your Gmail, which is uh, nice. Now, if I click on this little video icon, it's going to call him. And it opened up my camera. And um, let's see if he answers. Okay, and he did, and it's a um, his uh, his camera is facing the parking lot. So, uh, but typically we would see him 
uh, and I, again, you probably can't hear, uh, but uh, this is how it works. Now, if I wanted to um, to shut to to share my screen while I'm doing my Google Hangout, if for some reason I need to point things out on my screen, I can do that. I can select it. I'm getting a little concerned about sharing the screen with my sh screen already being shared with the Go To Meeting. So um, that might be a little odd, but I just, I did want to show you where that option was. It's up here on the, you know, where these ellipses are. I can continue chats with people. If I'm conferencing with more, with multiple people, I, you know, I can do that as well. I can also, once I'm in a chat, I can click on these uh, people up here and I can um, add people by putting in their email addresses and just invite people to the hangout while I'm doing the hangout. And at, at, at this point, it's just a matter of looking at each other, talking and saying what needs to be said. And when you're done, you can just hang up. So um, here's my, uh, let's see if I can um, go back to my Google Groups. And um, so I'm gonna open this up for questions. And you can turn your mics on if you have a question. In the meantime, I'm trying to get back into my Google group to see why I couldn't figure out how to add members. I've never not I've I I have been surprised by by um, new changes in user interfaces before, but I have never not been able to do something. So that's a first for me. Uh, any questions? Uh, yeah, the Hangouts, it's uh, an app that you download or you just install it all on the Gmail? When the one that I'm using is it just works right within the browser with nothing that has to be installed. You can install it on a phone. Um, so if you wanted to do a Hangout uh, to somebody's phone or something, they would have to have that app on their phone. But um, the one I'm using, I do right, right from Gmail or right from, again, if you go to um, hangouts.google.com, that's, uh, that's a, you know, you can, you can initiate it there. So you don't need to, to um, download anything special for it. Okay? It's okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? I'm good. Okay. I'm, okay. Um, so, uh, sh should we adjourn today's discussion? I yeah. think, yeah, if there's any, no more questions from the multitude of participants. Um, Aurora, are you there? <laughs> Yeah, I'm here, and uh, no one sent you, because I sent an email um, asking them to forward any questions that they may have. No one sent anything to you, Phil? No. Okay, so that will be it then. Oh, wait, I can show you. I found it. Back to our Google group. Okay. I will not be defeated. <laughs> If I, if you go to manage members, this is sort of what the page looked like when we first created the group. Boy, am I glad I found that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, this was the last of the five webinars, Aurora. And yes. uh, for those who uh, were not able to participate, you know, the videos uh, will, all the videos, uh, the recordings will be at the Google website that I sent to you. Um, yes, and I sent it out to all the, uh, the teachers. Yeah, and that website will be there indefinitely um, for you guys to use it as a, resor as a resource. And thank you so much. Um, if you have any other um, requests, you know how to get in touch with me. Let me know, okay. all right? Uh Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Jose. Appreciate it. No, thank you. And this was so worth it. It's going to make my life way easier from this point on.
Well, well which but... which one which one do you think is going to make your life easier? Everything. I saw my classmates using Hangouts in class. Uh -huh. What are they doing? <laughs> Why can um, I? Okay. It's so, it's really simple. It's just a matter yeah. of doing it for the first time. Exactly. I just didn't know how it worked. And I will say this, it's a little easier when you go to hangouts.google.com than from Gmail. It's a little more, it's a little clearer there. So keep that in mind if you're having, um, it, you know, if you're having some issues. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Well, thanks for part to all of those who participated. Uh, it was fun. Have a nice evening, both of you. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.